right, hello everybody. Um, T.R. Hazelrig, I'm the president and co-founder of Avatar Financial Group. Jerry Zebenbergen is our CEO and co-founder. And today we're gonna to be discussing Avatar's commercial mortgage rate. Um, but I thought before we did that, um, go ahead and give you a little bit of uh, background on the two of us and our, our, our partnership. Um, our partnership actually began in uh, 1995. Um, Jerry was the partner in charge of audit at Moss Adams and had overseen the audit of a local uh, private lending company uh, in Seattle. And the founder got into his 70s and poached Jerry from public accounting to take over as CEO, and then probably the wisest decision of his career, a few weeks after um, I was his first hire. So <laughs> uh, we grow, grew that company from a Western Washington-based uh, private lender, lending maybe 100,000 to a million dollars to, um, up to about $30 million per transaction. Um, we originally moved down to California with some contacts I had there, and then um, ballooned that company to a portfolio of approximately uh, $200 million, uh, a nationwide uh, portfolio. And it was very interesting back then, uh, we were doing participations. So it was really a crowdfunding company before there was a term for that. So on a $30 million loan, we might have 450 investors, but that meant printing 450 offering circulars, mailing them out, and so we were killing a redwood uh, a day. And then the uh, founder passed away, and when you own 49% of a family company, it's not a real comfortable place to be. So um, in 2003, we uh, sold our interest back to the remaining family members. We co-founded uh, Avatar Financial Group with Harvard University's endowment fund. So our first REIT was wholly owned uh, by Harvard and our arrangement with them was grow the company and then they wanted to harvest their investment uh, in four years. So we ended up um, completing a, a management buyout uh, four years later and have grown the company with a um, handful of institutional investors and then we have approximately just a little over a hundred uh, private individuals. Um, those have all come though friends and family or friends of friends and family. So all from a rural referral system. So. Um, Having um, Veravest as our fund administrator, um, we heard about this and uh, this event. Thought interesting way to meet some people that don't know about Avatar and haven't just come uh, from a direct referral. So um, we're very interested to meet all of you uh, at this event and share more about our, our mortgage rate. Well, as Tr said, we we formed after years of offering loans and participation where you invested in a single loan and maybe invested in numerous loans, uh, the, the circumstances were finally right for us to form a fund, which we did in, at the beginning of uh, 2021. And, and we believe that, the, that there are a number of, of benefits to investing in a fund rather, rather than investing in individual loans. In terms of how do we mitigate, mitigate risk, Avatar only funds in a first lien position. We don't, if, if we're taking a junior, it's because we already have a first lien and somebody said we could take a junior, so we do. But, but our loan is supported and the decision is made based upon the value of, of the first lien, that, that real estate. By investing in a fund, you have the advantage of as soon as your equity comes in, you, you are immediately diversified. At the moment, we have 40 loans outstanding. Those are in various property types from hospitality, uh, some small office, retail, uh, and industrial, and of course, apartments. So it, it's not only invested in property type, it's invested in geographic location because as TR said, we lend nationwide. We also control risk by our maximum loan to value. Uh, we, we have a few loans in the portfolio. Our maximum is 70%. And on average, our, our loans compared to the value of the properties that under, underlie our loans, our, our average loan to value is 53% across those 40 loans. So that, that helps when, when you're thinking about putting money with us, uh, the, the idea that any one loan could create a big problem, it, it just doesn't. Our maximum loan, or our largest loan in the portfolio right now, is only 5% of the portfolio. So 
Uh, average loan size is 2.9 million. And so they're, they're sizable loans, but, but they're not huge. And uh, so that's, that's kind of what our portfolio looks like. As far as liquidity is concerned, uh, we do have a line of credit in the fund that allows us to, uh, if, if somebody, as we've had a few people, needed $100,000 or, or, or a little more, uh, we can borrow credit and, and distribute that uh, so that as coming in and out of the fund, uh, if a loan pays off, we rather than having unused capital sitting there, we pay down the line of credit. And so there's this kind of stretch, a cash management that uh, the line of credit allows us to do. In terms of, the, uh, of your own investment coming in with us, uh, uh, as you'll read in the PPM, if you decide to, to look further with us, uh, it's, we ask for a 12-month commitment with the money. After that, you can, can uh, request a distribution. And because we are uh, making short-term loans, uh, we, we have payoffs uh, pretty regularly, uh, generally a monthly, so that if somebody said, hey, I, I need to go do something else, or I've got a family thing coming up, or I want to buy a boat, or whatever that might be, uh, we, we can facilitate that. Um, because we, when we funded or uh, formed this fund, we put it in a REIT structure, a real estate investment trust, and it's a mortgage REIT, and because it's a mortgage REIT, under the 2017 Jobs Act, up to 20% of the income that you get from our fund uh, is, is, uh, can be excluded from your federal taxable income. So that's, that's a, a pretty nice benefit. I can't promise you the full 20% because that computation is made at your tax return level. Uh, and if you have other things going on with businesses that are, you're already getting that, there are some limitations. But, but for most people, they're getting that full 20% excluded. And TR and I have, have been, the, been working together, managing investments just like we're doing now for, well, since 1995. And so, uh, and we've got a, a really good crew that helps us do that, and we'll talk about them in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, I was going to touch on um, who our, our borrowers are and kind of how we uh, evaluate them. So typically, somebody who's going to borrow from Avatar or a bridge lender, typically one of two reasons. Um, right now, especially, banks have retracted, and those that are funding are funding in a very, very slow pace. So people that have a 1031 exchange or have an earnest money down to purchase uh, a retail or uh, hospitality property. Um, we're seeing tremendous volume in people whose banks have just said, listen, we're not gonna hit your deadline. So a lot of times, especially with the 1031 exchange, you can have people putting 50% cash down. They've got great credit. There is nothing out of alignment but for timing. So that um, it, it creates a lot of our business. Um, we do full background checks, credit checks, appraisals on the property. Um, and then uh, about half of uh, bridge business is where something's out of alignment. So there may be some new tenants that don't have the seasoning. They don't have six months of, of, uh, of uh, paid rent that a bank may want to see. There could be, um, don't get divorced. Uh, divorce really hurts people's credit. <laughs> People forget to pay a Verizon bill. And you can add up missed payments and on a $5 million loan, missed payments may add up to $600, and they're, they're meaningless, we would all think, but the credit score is down to where you're no longer bankable. So um, a bridge loan can solve that problem, allow somebody to refinance, give them two years to get their credit score um, back up. So that, those are the, the main reasons that um, people are borrowing from us. I was going to also mention um, the, our current um, portfolio is, is $250 million. Um, we have a little over uh, about 113 million in the REIT, and that's growing on a monthly basis. We have about uh, 30 million dollars of loans uh, closing uh, over the next 30 days. One of the most important things I think to understand about a mortgage REIT, and especially a first lien mortgage REIT, is you've you've heard about um, 
common equity, preferred equity. Um, not so much, I, I think, I didn't hear much about second lanes, but when you're going into an uncertain environment, um, investing in a first lane is first out. So when, if values retract, when we have 53% uh, LTV, you've got over 40% of an equity cushion um, on average in a property. So that allows for a lot of fluctuation in values. So equity, preferred equity, is a, a great investment option for a portion of people's portfolios. Uh, if you're more conservative or have a portion of your portfolio that you're looking for preservation of capital is most important and reasonable return, that's where a, for, a first lane debt fund might be appropriate for you. I want to talk a little bit about, about our team. Uh, people have talked about how many employees they have. You're looking at 25% of the workforce at Avatar is up here on the stage. We, we are a boutique kind of shop. Uh, there, there's, there's eight of us. Uh, our lead underwriter who, who resides in Dallas, Mark Holman, uh, he has over two decades of experience doing deals with Goldman Sachs. He spent about six years with Trimont uh, as an asset manager there. So he brings uh, a, just a wealth of institutional and you know knowledge about uh, about how the big guys do it. You know we're we're uh, learning from Mark, and uh, he's been with us a couple of years now, and, and just making some uh, really valuable contributions. We also have uh, Ryan Cronin Prather. He's our our uh, COO and in-house general counsel. Ryan has about 13 years of uh, experience as an attorney, uh, all in, in the real estate field. He worked with a developer. He's worked with uh, a, a number of construction companies as clients. He's got litigation experience. So he's, he's a, a critical piece to our documentation being proper, uh, keeping our, our outside attorneys. We use Garachi uh, most of the time for loan documents, and, uh, and and Ryan is able to, you know, keep that on a path and work out issues with borrower counsel and whatever it might be, but things get resolved properly. He's also really helpful when we get to a loan that that uh, is in default, and you know we need to take the proper steps to encourage a borrower to make payment, resolve it. So that's great. We also, our, our CFO, Carla Stadler, uh, she uh, first worked with us at the predecessor company as the controller, and she, uh, she leads up the uh, loan servicing. Uh, we do our servicing in-house, and, and she also interfaces with Verivest on a monthly basis. Verivest does our our monthly financial statements. They do our all of our investor uh, distributions. And by the way, we ha do have that option of either taking your dis distribution in cash or reinvesting and, and letting that grow. We charge a 1% servicing fee on that fund. Our target return is 8%. If as things are starting to move up, as those newer rates get built into our fund, I expect that that we will exceed that, and when we do, uh, we we get a, a a bonus for that as the manager. But you benefit as well. That's a fifty fifty split. Yeah. As, as I uh, was mentioning, we've been at this uh, since nineteen ninety five, uh, so we've seen um, every cycle that's happened since then. Um, this uh, tells you, you know, as far this is our ten year uh, return, and that's after uh, subtracting a one point servicing fee. So 8.59% is what actually uh, was distributed uh, to our investors over the last decade. And I think for the level of security that comes with a first lien, um, you, you can't equate uh, equity returns to a return uh, in a first lien secured debt fund. But I think risk adjusted, I think it's a, it's a very uh, healthy return. And, and by the way, since we started, the re we've distributed that annual at an annual 8% rate, distributions have gone out every month. So no disruption there in your cash flow if you're looking for, for that. Uh, key relationships, I mentioned uh, Garachi as our, our law firm, they're not, not on that slide. 
Uh, Axos Bank provides our line of credit. Uh, they've been great to work with. Uh, as I said, Veravest does our investor accounting and accounting for the REIT. And RSM uh, <clears throat> is our auditor, and our fund is audited annually. And so it's, you know, we, we try to do those right things. And, and by the way, when, when you get a line of credit with Axos, we've been through the background process, I can tell you. So, so we've been vetted by them, at least. Um, and, and obviously, a key relationship we have is with the 100 investors that give us the capital to, to make this business work. And you know, we, we would invite you to join that group. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate you having us.